My name is Sade Becky Lyons. This is Buckingham News. I will resign from one. A member of the SU Exec says she will resign over conflicts of interest in her planning of events for commercial companies. In the past, one of Buckingham students' biggest gripes was that there was little going on at the Union compared to downtown. But recent years have seen a rise in the number and quality of planned events. It's now emerged that three members of the SU Executive are not only planning SU events, but are working at the same time for a rival commercial company. These are Anisa Malji, Justin Giannati and Quincy Isabilli. We spoke to David Mays, the SU's events coordinator, about the situation at hand. As far as I'm aware, um, there are three members of the executive who misguidedly um, have, have um, some form of connection, formal connection, with, with B of X. Um, I think maybe they're doing it with the right motives, but they are mistaken. Long term, it threatens the existence of your student union facilities. After we spoke to David Mays, we confronted the SU's president on the matter. It has been identified that BUX has a negative competition with us. For example, I, like you said before, we have members of the union who have decided to go directly to work for BUX. Annie is one of them. She's like she, she's work, she works for BUX. It happened that during the freshest week, while we, the Senate Union Executive, were trying to plan to enjoy, ensure that our freshers have a wonderful experience while they came in for the first time. It's obvious that there is a conflict of interest and you cannot serve both interests at the same time. However, you need to stand on one part of the, of, of the fence. It's either you want to resign as BUX, they associate yourself with BUX and work for the union, or you resign as a, as a union executive because there's no way you can protect the commercial interest and protect the student's welfare at the same time. Prior to speaking to Adebayo, we interviewed Annie, who told us of her plans for a resignation. Um, it has become a possibility that I should resign from one or the other. But do you think you should? Um, I think it is something that I'm definitely looking into. I actually have a I have yes a vote sheet. Do you think you should resign? I will resign from one. You will. I know. Right. Um, well, I'm holding a vote tomorrow in um, our SU election. So, having heard both sides of this controversial issue, it seems resignations are imminent. This is Tilly Smith reporting for Buckingham News. On Tuesday, prominent businessman John Mayer visited the university to give a lecture on how important the brand is in the modern age. Ogiri Omaha has the story. Today, at the University of Buckingham, one of the most important figures from the international alcohol industry came to give a speech at Radcliffe Centre. John Mayer, formerly of Allied the Mike, came to give a master class in brands and extension. Okay, I want you to consider during the, uh, the talk uh, the impact on other stakeholders, from brand owners, manufacturers, retail, retailers, the consumer, and also shareholders. I'm not going to have time to go into detail on all of them individually, so I want you to be thinking about that as well. After the presentation, we asked John Mayer some questions. Is it more important for brands to get a foothold outside of the traditional market? I think in today's world, compared with yesteryear, it's more important now, it's a more competitive environment. You've got different mediums, internet, etc. And I think it's more important than ever to get as much uh, focus on the brand as you possibly can in every single arena. So, in short, yes. In a highly competitive global market, is good marketing one of the most essential ingredients of success? As a marketeer, uh, I'd say yes. Uh, marketing is hugely important, especially if you, you take the in, in entire strict definition of marketing uh, in terms of a management process for identifying, anticipating and satisfying customer requirements profitably, then absolutely, if you don't do that, you don't have a business. How good a salesman you are, you've got to stick with the marketing. With the alcohol industry being bombarded with negative attributes, is there a need for events like this to take place so people can have a better understanding of Ogiri or more? This is what we use. This week, Graham Roos and the Radcliffe Centre hosted the screening of the award-winning documentary, We Are Poets. Leandro Berenz went to ask Graham about his very own poetry documentary, starring students from the university. On Tuesday evening, the Radcliffe Centre hosted the premiere of We Are Poets. We went along to find out what moving and radical stories Fritz and Siouf had to tell.
The award-winning documentary chronicles the journey of young poets as they travel to Washington, D.C. to compete in the prestigious Poetry Slam. We asked Graham Roos, artist-in-residence, what he thought about the film. The film this evening was very interesting because it's six quite underprivileged kids from Leeds um, and these industrial cities up north, I'm from Sheffield, uh, are, you know, they don't have much in the way of culture in the same way as they do in the south. Start off thinking this potentially is going to be quite a depressing film, it's all sort of gritty, rainy, grey northern skies and then you see the development of their characters and how hard they work and you see that truth and beauty come from within, they're not an external thing. Graham is also creating a similar project for the university. We asked him to explain that. what that involves. But I've handpicked a few students who I think have got a spark. Some of them have written poetry before, some of them haven't and they're just starting to write their stuff. And I've been filming them over a year and we're seeing what we, we've been getting. Uh, and I think we'll have quite a, a nice film that's probably about an hour long. With the artists in residence renewed enthusiasm for the spoken word, perhaps our own university will soon see similar events. This is Leandra Behrens, Buckingham News. In other news, university administrators led by the Vice Chancellor were on hand to hear suggestions and complaints of the Student Assembly on Wednesday. Some frank exchanges, particularly over the laundrette, were interrupted by a fire alarm, but the meeting resumed soon after. We'll be following up on the decisions made in future bulletins. Reverend Colin Cartwright held a lecture about his new book, Burning to Get the Vote, on Tuesday. He followed the century-old suffrage campaign in Buckinghamshire, bringing alive the struggles of some lesser-known figures in the women's fight for the vote. Reverend Cartwright has also devised six heritage walking trails, which trace history of the women's suffrage movement in Bucks. On the 1st of August, it was announced that the Royal Mail would have a strike ballot over privatisation. Michael Pearson went to investigate on how this privatisation will affect things here in Buckingham. Could there be a shake-up in the public service we love and know? The government wants to take the Royal Mail out of their hands and make it a privatised business. This could be a massive change for things here in Buckingham, as we have two post offices that aren't making any profit. Neil works for the communications union CWU, which is campaigning to save the Royal Mail on behalf of its workers. Neil's job is to spread awareness of the campaign to save the Royal Mail. This involves speaking to many people across rural areas of Buckinghamshire, as well as sending out posts to members of Parliament. Under privatisation, market towns like this, uh, as only in my area as well, are, are, are greatly under threat. Letter deliveries is a loss-making arm of the Royal Mail, and any potential investor or shareholders will not be wanted to support loss-making arms of it. Our campaign at the moment is to raise the profile with just members of the public to actually make them aware of what the circumstances can be. Once it's gone, it's lost forever. But could privatisation actually save the Royal Mail? We spoke to Juan Castaneda, who specialises in privatisation at the University of Buckingham. We asked him about the announcement and why it was coming now. For the first time in several years, the company did have a profit. There are many reasons to explain this. One of these is that the company was run more efficiently. Another one is, was uh, an increase in, in the non-traditional business, which is the parcels del deliveries, not just the post, the traditional post or conventional post uh, services, but a different one. But once you give these assets uh, of the company and put them in the hands of, uh, of, private, of the private initiative, they will know how to allocate resources better than politicians. So, the future of the Royal Mail is still uncertain. What is clear, though, is that trade unions will strike if the government does not secure jobs in any plan that they make. This is Michael Pearson, Buckingham News. Now over to Stefan Regulus with the sports. Thank you, Shardo. The University of Buckingham's Boxing Club has taken huge strides since it began last year, with members joining due to the sport's many fitness benefits paired with self-defence. Sana Rebecca Cowler was there. 
The University of Buckingham introduced a new boxing club run by Tobias Morris, which has evolved rapidly. We spoke to a fellow student about his views on the club. There are a lot of talented boxers in here and we all get together and train hard, especially our trainer who is very good at boxing as well. And basically, we all enjoy our, our, our trainings, it's very good because we all learn from each other. Some, some, some people are new here, some people didn't do boxing, maybe someone did other martial arts. So we can mix and just... How did Buckingham Boxing Club evolve into what it is today? Andre, who's a fellow student from Bermuda who fought for his country, and he started teaching me one-to-one. -one. Um, from that, other students were looking at us and started wanting to train with us. So I started up a small club just on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we grew from two people coming to 12 people coming. <clears throat> and now we have between 12 and 15 students who come every Tuesday and Thursday. So that's why I started up the club, and now because we got bigger, we obviously needed more equipment, which we've finally got from the sports department. And that's about your qualifications. Yeah, I'll be in the Nationals in seven months, representing Buckingham University alongside with MK Victors. Um, I've been training for a year and a half for it. Um, I boxed when I was younger, and I'm also hoping to bring a couple of other students from Bucks ABC alongside to compete. Do you see yourself getting into championships? As we've got such a variety of students, we've got great people who will be willing to participate and great people with great um, ability, which they already have. Egia, for example, he was already trained from Moscow, so now we're just developing more. Well, good luck to the Buckingham Boxing Club in their future. This is Dimple Robarty reporting for Buckingham News. After Buckingham alumni Matthew Proud purchased a Ford Meadow site for the university earlier this year, students were asking questions about the progress being made. Alex Biddle has the story. Now the Ford Meadow site is owned by the university, students are eagerly awaiting development to take place. The old Buckingham town ground is a distant memory, and the once homely ground is barely recognisable. At a recent student assembly, the vice-chancellor had estimated that the ground will be ready in just over a year. But by the looks of things, development should be more arduous than expected. With the grass at knee height, smashed glass everywhere and broken spectator stands, the university has a huge job in its hands when it comes to renovating the site. I spoke to sports officer Callum Roberts about the developments that are going to take place. Uh, so presently the idea for the Ford Meadows site uh, is to retain it as a sports stadium um, and renovate the football pitch and bring it back to a usable condition uh, and also to investigate the possibility of putting a mugger multi-use games area over on the site as well as a tennis court. Um, those are plans at the moment and nothing's been set in stone. I asked Callum about the possibility of ground sharing with Buckingham Town. Um, it's been mentioned to me a couple of times now uh, about uh, some sort of relationship with Buckingham Town Football Club. Um, I personally haven't um, been approached by Buckingham Town or any of their representatives, um, so I couldn't comment as to any uh, relationship or agreement between the University and Buckingham Town at the moment, um, although um, I'm sure that the University would be willing to listen to any, uh, anything that would benefit both the Town and the University. Ford Meadow is an exciting prospect, and now with plans almost in place, let's hope developments are soon to follow. This is Alex Biddle, Buckingham News. Back to the studio. It was National Vanilla Ice Cream Day earlier this week. And what better way to celebrate it than with a quick, easy and delicious recipe. Tarje Prest is in the kitchen with Gladys Zoo making bread out of vanilla ice cream. Gladys here is going to show us how to make bread with vanilla ice cream. Hi Gladys. Hi Anne. Yes. Um, all we need are two ingredients. The first one is a vanilla ice cream and the second one is a raising flour. Just those two ingredients? Yeah. Just put it like this 